with Ryan Reese from Southern California. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. What's up, family? Another Saturday night. And what's interesting is that earlier today, I was actually at the Riverside Municipal... Uh, it's the venue. It's where uh, POD and, and Dose and them, they're, they're playing that radio show. Mm-hmm. I went out there earlier, and I got to say what up to everyone, and then I realized I had to be at the radio show, so I couldn't even watch the concert. I saw that picture. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was today? So people think I'm there, but I'm not. I'm here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was there for a second. It's going to be cool, man. Rad, rad things are going on. Dose is obviously the band that goes on the high school tours with us. So they uh, they played Battle of the Bands in, in the mainstream market, and they actually won. And now they're on this huge uh, uh, Christmas show on That's a mainstream awesome. circuit. So it's rad, man. God's uh, doing rad things with those guys. That's awesome, man. So anyway, tonight, uh, we're going to get into uh, the nitty-gritty. We um, I've been meeting with, up with a lot of different people, from kids to adults, to uh, middle-aged people that are dealing with uh, demonic stuff. And that's we've, we've kind of hit on it in the radio mm-hmm. show in the past of, of different situations. But more and more am I talking to people that are actually seeing these demons manifest in the room or these black shadows or they're hearing voices or growing up with an imaginary friend, which, you know, they're seeing these, these, these demons, but they're calling them their imaginary friends. Um, I was with a girl last, I spoke um, over at First Love Church two nights ago, and this girl walked in and her arms were shredded from cutting. I mean, it was like, I, it looked like shredded beef pretty. I mean, it was healed, but I can imagine when it was raw, mm. I've never seen so many cuts going from her wrist all the way up to the top of her arm on both arms. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. And as I was talking to this girl, she basically told me like, you know, she, she, you know, she got molested when she was young. And then that opened doors to like demonic stuff happening in her, in her, in her, uh, her life. And then she got into, uh, drugs and alcohol and that opened up more doorways. And then she started cutting and it just crazy stuff started going on and she started getting into heroin. And so I started talking to her and she just had no joy in her life. And, you know, I, she's just like, I, I need something to change in my life. I don't know what to do. She's all, sometimes I just find myself looking at the wall for five hours mm-hmm. or sometimes I just like come, come to you myself and I'm like cutting and I'm like, I know this is demonic. I mean, all the way back to the, to, to the prophets of uh, Baal mm-hmm. when um, Elijah met him on the hill and, and they were cutting themselves to trying to, you know, wake their God up in a sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this goes all the way back, you know, to, to the old times. But there's nothing new under the sun, like King Solomon says. You know, Satan's been around forever. But what I've seen is that he has a major foothold. And it's people that are in the church, people that are out of the church. And if you're tuning in and maybe you're dealing with this stuff, and we're going to talk about some stories of different ways Satan can come in and oppress you, uh, possess you. Um, I mean, Jesus came across a lot of people that were possessed, and I don't believe that everyone is possessed. We'll talk about stories of that we've come across of people that were pos- that have been possessed, and then people that have been oppressed. And you know, the verse that we're going to pull from tonight is uh, in Ephesians uh, six. It says, uh, you know, Paul's talking to talking to his people, and he says, verse eleven, it says, "Put on all of God's armor, so you will not be able to, so you will be able to stand against the strategy." Of the devil, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That's the New Living Translation that I'm reading out of. The culture we live in, you guys. I mean, they have the movie Ouija or yeah. uh, Ouija out. Uh, um, I mean, every Time movie. To, it, yeah. Think about it. when I was a kid, Poltergeist was out, and then they had like Freddy Krueger and and. Exorcist is always. Probably the most craziest uh, ones. Uh, you know, they have these movies. But now, every week, it's it's something new. I, You know what's crazy is I actually seen online recently. I was uh, just going through a blog, and there was a girl. Uh, they, were, they were advertising for this, this bikini, and it was a, a Ouija board. Hmm. A Ouija board bikini. It was just like this blog, this, this skateboard blog I go to, but there happened to be this photo. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, these, these kids are buying Ouija board, like, 
swimsuits? This is crazy. Well, I think one thing in, in our culture a lot is, you know, they, they paint a picture, all this stuff, you know, like in the skateboard industry that, you know, back in the day, there's so, I mean, still, yeah. there's so much of these different pentagram stuff or like 666 and all this different stuff. Some people like mess around, they're, they're playing around with these things. Some, they don't take it seriously. Some are uh, given over to it because maybe they, they back that kind of lifestyle, whatever. Um, but what they don't realize is that it's legit. Like it's real. There is such thing as evil. There is such thing as good. Satan is real. For the child of God, Satan is a defeated foe. But he still roams around the earth, the Bible says. And he is come. He, he comes to seek, to kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out right here in the book of Ephesians, he's talking about the warfare of the believer. Because we have many blessings in the Lord. We're called to walk in the Lord. But now the reality of it is we are in a battle. And if you don't think that you're in a battle, you're going to get beat up. And that's what Paul says. You need to be prepared because the enemy, it pictures him as being a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, who does not rest, who strategizes against us to hinder us from what God has from us, for us in many different ways. You see it, like you said, throughout the Bible. We've seen it in many people's lives. Our own lines, um, we've been through a lot of crazy stuff. And, you know, in studio also we have Mike Amisco, um, from, who's an engineer, one of the uh, sound engineers at Cabbage Coast Mesa. We were wrapping out earlier, and he was talking about a lot of stuff that he's been through where the enemy was trying to really oppress him. And all of us come from a background of drugs and alcohol. And when you get into drugs and alcohol, it truly does open up a door in your life. Um, many of us can attest, like, it started off real, I've always said that, you know, smoking weed after school, it started off something so simple. And, you know, I thought innocent, you know, just trying something out. But before you know it, it becomes a forest fire in your life, like it takes over your life. And I remember a lot of times when I was younger, uh, dealing with demonic stuff. I, know, I think one thing that me and Ryan have shared often over the years is we had this one instance where it was like a party time, Labor Day weekend. Uh, we were going crazy. One of our good friends uh, met up with us and we were doing a bunch of ecstasy. It was during the day and we we're going from bar to bar down in Laguna. And we did, I don't know how many ecstasy pills we did, but we did tons that whole day long. I remember at the end, you know, I remember going to the Ica Mouse concert mm -hmm. and everything. Yep. And then going back to your house, and I remember my heart just pounding out of my chest. Like, I'm like, how does it feel like when you OD? I'm thinking, it might feel like how you feel right now. Mm -hmm. Like, my heart was pounding. You were in the other room. And I made it through the night. Then I ended up going home the next day. I, I believe so. Labor Day was a Monday. Tuesday, I go home. And then like on Wednesday night when I was going to bed, I remember I had this crazy thing happen to me. It was so evil. It was so dark. I was in my room and I was being held down in my bed. And I remember like seeing this arm like come around me. And as soon as I acknowledged the arm, like I remember it just began to squeeze, to squeeze me really tough. And the main thing was this, this evil presence in my room. And I called out, my mom was a Christian in my whole life. You know, I knew there was something special about Jesus. And I just found myself in that instant calling out to his name, saying, Jesus, help me. My mouth was tied. I couldn't speak. And then I remember it took all the strength that I could to just say a couple words. And then I was going in and out. And then I remember like not wanting to fall back asleep. And as I started going down, I saw something come out of my, my closet like, it was crazy, crazy stuff. But I thought I was tripping, and I thought that I was the only one that battled with this stuff. Because, like you and I said, like, dealing with people now in ministry, a lot of times when you just start sit down talking, and they'd say, man, I had this thing happen in my room. I had this situation. A lot of people go through these things. And I remember driving, sober-minded, sober the next day, and I call you, Ryan. And I'm like, dude, you won't believe what happened to me. Uh, in my room, I'm t saying this whole thing. And I remember you being silent on the other side of the phone. He's like, when did that happen? I'm like, it happened last night. He's like, dude, the same thing happened to me. Yep. Right. And it's like, I think what you wanted to bring this up tonight is because if these are things that you are battling with, understand this, it is real, but there is power in the name of the Lord. You know, the enemy wants to rip us off of the joy. The Lord can truly take over our lives, but you can't play with these things. Like the enemy definitely wants to, to jack you up and I, I you know why don't you tell your side of that yeah well you're absolutely right I mean pretty much when you did call me that next day I had an encounter that night as well and I was laying in my bed and it's one of those uh, situations where you wake up and you feel like you're you think you could be dreaming but I, I knew I was awake because it was such a terrifying feeling it's like 
one of the scariest feelings I've ever felt in my life. Um, just, just the presence. And there was this black shadow, this demon thing in, in my ceiling. And I have a two story ceilings in my room and it was jumping across my room and then coming at me and something else was on top of me, choking me out. And that, that, I, and I did not call out to Jesus because I wasn't walking with God. <laughs> right. So I, in my head, I'm like, I'm not calling out to Jesus. I'm just going to kind of ride this whole thing out. And it came back three times that night and it disappeared. And you know, you know, the story is I ended up calling you, we talked and, uh, and that was that. And I ended up getting saved later on. But what's interesting is that's something that, you know, people get a little shook about when you start talking about this in the church. We have Mike, we're going to have him tell a couple of his stories because he also has some of these things. But what's interesting is since we've been through this now, how God's been using us to go to high schools and talk to kids and kids that are cutting and suicidal or, or they're having these entities, these demons showing up in their room. Um, I was meeting up with a 12 year old and two 13 year olds that their mom wanted me to come meet with them. So one of the kids was cutting and, and she was having demons show up in her room. So I went to go meet with her, but then she said, well, her friends are also having these, these entities show up in their room. So I go, well, just bring their kids from school and I'll just meet up with them at a Starbucks and we'll talk. So I show up with these young kids and we're talking and they're kind of being like, they're not really talking too much. Mm -hmm. They're, they're kind of keeping themselves. So I tell my story. And then next thing you know, they start telling me one kid says that she grew up with an imaginary friend. But it was this little girl she would see. And what happened is later on, as she got older. That little girl turned into like a demon. So these imaginary friends, when you see your kid playing with imaginary friends, it, that's demonic. Yeah. Literally, it turns in. That's a demon that's like showing up. That's what's going on with this little girl. And she was telling me, she's like, yeah, that, that's basically what happens. This thing started manifesting into a demon. And then these other two girls, they were having these, these demons showing up in their room. And I'm like, okay, so you guys are 13 year old. What are you guys into? And they start telling me what kind of music they're into. And they're listening to some pretty gnarly stuff. So I'm like, tell them about the gospel that Jesus can set them free. And you got to turn from, you got to get rid of all that stuff. So then at the end of my conversation, uh, I'm, I'm, I start talking about that new movie. I'm like, yeah, you know, that movie, new movie that just came out, Ouija, you know, it's about the Ouija board. And they're all, oh yeah, we want to go see that. I'm like, wait, no, right. you guys, you guys are understanding here. Like this is the stuff that opens doorways. And maybe you're out there listening on the radio and you're having this stuff happening. Maybe you're into pornography only and you're, you're 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 experiencing these things these are all doorways that open yourself up to to stuff you know the bible talks about pharmacia which is witchcraft it's it's drugs and, and other forms of witchcraft i mean in second chronicles 33 there's that that king uh manasseh he was into astrology he was into a mediums that's where you exercise demons and you have a medium speaking through that person a demon speaking through that person drugs and and alcohol and all these different gods he had moloch and ashtraf and all these different gods and he was one of the most evil kings and he was totally into this stuff and uh if you know maybe you maybe you have opened yourself up to this stuff and you need to know how to get out of this stuff we want to we want to hear from you we want to pray for you we want to uh, we want to talk to you, so you could call in. What's what's the number, Sean? It's eight 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 five six four six one seven three. Again, the number is eight 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 five six four six one seven three. I encourage you lock that number in your phone because that number never changes. You know, one thing we were talking about with Mike earlier, um, he was talking about how he got introduced to like meditation and stuff back where you were in high school, right? Correct. Yeah. And why don't you tell people because especially in our culture today. So many people get into like the new age movement and this new kind of weird spirituality thing. And um, but what it's linked to could be very um, dangerous. Why don't you tell your story about that? Right. So I was a senior in high school and uh, there was this really popular class to take psychology. And the teacher, you know, she was really fun and, and, and a cool lady to be around. And uh, she actually, you know, gave out the invitation and said, if anybody wants to learn to meditate, come to my class at, you know, during lunchtime. And so me and a friend went and there was probably about 12 people inside the classroom and she dims the lights and she turns on this tape of a guru who was, you know, we were all following and, and learning how to meditate. And um, so the odd thing was probably after about four or five minutes or so, I noticed that all the class was in a, some kind of a trance, and I. What, what, what do you mean trance? What did it like, look like? Yeah, well, they were uh, actually everybody was kind of like following the same motion and and locked into something where their you know their hands are are moving like this or something no like that. No way. Yeah, yeah. So Sean was saying he saw something like that at one time. Actually, there was a time too where 
I've had that same experience when um, there was four friends in a car and we were we were actually getting high and the music was going and we actually were doing the same thing where we're just kind of like, you know, came into some kind of trance where there's felt like there's like something moving through our body or something no like that. Way. Yeah. So the anyways, the teacher had talked about having um, out of body experiences and stuff like that at one time. And so. The yoga, was, the yoga guy on the, on, the, on the screen. No, it was actually the teacher that was teaching the class that invited no everybody. Way. To come. Yeah, so she was talking about that kind of stuff. So it wasn't too long after that really odd demonic stuff was happening and, and with me and my friend that went there. So, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. But then, so you, I know that you actually started having out-of-body experiences. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so anyways... Um, you know, we what started happening during this time is I started having these out of body experiences, and it was just like Sean said a moment ago. You know, or, or you were saying that it feels like a dream, but you know, you're not quite sure. But then, you know, you know, you're, you're you got all your senses. You know, so um, it's when that started happening with me, it felt like some entity was trying to pull my soul out of my body you know that's what it felt like and i'd i'd actually feel a demonic presence there and stuff and so that's what got me crying out to jesus you know i think that's an important part of what we're all talking about you mm -hmm. know it's weird stuff to talk about but it's so weird on how how it happens so much there's so many people i know that you know they'll talk about it like one-on-one -on -one. yeah this happens to me too but you know you probably can't go to your pastor or your mom or something like that but it's so cool that you guys have this, you know, where, you know, if you guys are dealing with something like this, you know, this is real and Jesus is the answer, you know, to, to all this stuff. Well, let's, let's talk about Jesus. Yeah. I mean, how many, how many unclean spirits did, uh, he, <laughs> set free. how many people Friends. did he set free? You know, there was guys that couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. They were dumb from the demons. There was another kid that would, uh, he would be demon possessed and the demon would throw him into the fire right and then you have the demoniacs that were hiding in the caves that were cutting themselves breaking the shackles mm -hmm. uh too. what are some other uh stories i mean they're it's all through the uh it's all through the old test or all through the new testament right so tons of times and it's because satan this is what what happens satan always wants to destroy the work of god you know from the beginning of the time you see satan as he had tempted eve uh, to sin, and Adam gave into it as well. There's always been a battle. There's been a battle since that time, even before that. The fall of Satan, putting his will above the the, the will of the Lord, because that, and that's why the Bible says he was cast out of heaven. I think what's a very important aspect is that sometimes people have in their mind that that Satan is this figure that's like red with like horns and all that kind of stuff, stuff that's been made up. But the, what the Bible says is that Satan was a created being, an angelic being. And he was, you know, in the book of uh, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, it speaks of a picture of him, that he had these timbers, right? Like being able to have these strong lungs to, for music. That's why a lot of people believe that he might have been like the archangel of worship. I mean, that's speculation, but that's something that could, <laughs> could make sense. And then that would be very interesting because you think of how powerful music is. Absolutely. And we were talking about all of us a big like music bus, you know, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even to the present time of the influence of the enemy and a lot of stuff in lyrical content. I remember like um, being on drugs back in the day and, you know, you listen to like some some Grateful Dead, you listen to some of the Beatles, and you listen to some of the Doors and the things that they were saying, like you were connecting with it at that time mm -hmm. because you yourself had been open up to this demonic realm, mm -hmm. you know, at the time you don't think it, but it's reality. It is. And all these things start connecting the dots. Do you think it's any coincidence that some of the biggest musicians and artists of all time hit these big old highs of fame and then they level out or they overdose on drugs or they commit suicide? Because that's what the enemy does. He promises you this this high, just as he did with, with Jesus. He, he sent the temptation of Jesus, right? Turn this bread, this rock into bread. Then it was, why don't you um, jump off the, the top of this temple? You know, to tempt the Lord and the Lord would continue. Jesus would um, go back to him with the word of God. And the last one where a lot of people fall into this place is if you look at everything around, look at look at all of these nations, look at all of this fame, whatever you want. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. And what was in those nations? Women, power, fame, 
Everything was right the there. World, yeah. And what did the Lord say? Jesus, he says, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you worship. You see, in life, you're either going to worship God or you're going to worship Satan. And Satan worship is really me worship. You want to take that? Yeah, I'm going to. No, no, I'm just reading. Yeah, we got some we got some good. Uh, you know, good, uh, one, good one thing that I wanted to say, too, is like and I brought this up a couple of times. And now since we're going down this road, uh, you know, already, you know, all of us big Beatles fans. And John Lennon was my favorite. I thought he was probably the, the best songwriter out of them. I mean, Paul McCartney and him wrote the most of the songs. But when he left the band, he had one of his first solo albums was John Lennon, the Plastic Ono Band. And on that album, he had that song that was God question mark. And I remember back in there, I loved it, loved listening to that, that song. But then after I came to the Lord, listening to it again was like crazy. Because in the song, it's not really even much melody to it. It's just him kind of saying this. He's like, I don't believe oh, yeah. in the king. I don't believe in Alvin's. I don't believe in Beatles. I don't believe in the queen. I don't believe in Kennedy. I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe in Jesus. I just believe, believe in me. In me. Mm -hmm. And I remember the hair is just like going up on my arms when I heard that because really that is satanic worship, self-worship, putting your will before the Lord. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. So get yourself that mindset of your mind that it's just this, you know, dark red devil horn. No, it is putting your will above the Lord. That's what Satan did. That's what he wants us to do. He wants you to get focused on the material it's aspects of self. life. Yeah, all self. self. And our society is so self-driven. You know, you were talking about like the spirituality, you know, meditation and stuff. That stuff gets really high. It's, it gets hip and like trendy in our culture nowadays. But it's opening your mind up to this empty yourself, meditate. But guess what? When you empty yourself, something's going to go in. You know, and that's what Jesus said when he, he healed some of those who were demon possessed in the Bible. He says, go and say, you know, he says, if one goes and cleans the whole place, and it's not filled with the things of God. The enemy goes around. It's like, I'm going to go back to my own home. And when it sees that it's all clean and nothing has been brought inside, that's speaking of putting the Lord into your life. Mm -hmm. He comes in with demons more powerful than he and rants that home. And how many times does that happen? It seems like every time I backslid, it went back to God. It got worse and worse and worse. I want to go ahead and grab this call. Uh, Denise from uh, El Monte. How you doing, Denise? Um, hi, how are you guys? We're doing, doing good. good. Hi, what's your question tonight? Okay, um, the reason why I'm calling is because um, I mean, you guys are talking about how you open doors to the devil when you do certain things that God doesn't like. And my mom has a habit of like going to mediums to like see how the future is going to be and so on and so forth. I really disagree because um, I used to do that before I came to God. But um, now that I've been reading the scriptures, I know that that's something that God does disapprove i just want like to know if any of what my mom is doing will affect me or my family um is there any curse you know that i know god does not like that so right. would that affect me or my family or my kids when she's doing it even though she comes to my house when she um you know she stays at my house for every time she comes from mexico right. so um you know, I just, I'm, I'm very concerned because she, like, she loves all that. So she, and so I she think, lives in Mexico and she's into, because there's like a lot of like black magic and stuff, uh, sensoria and stuff down there in, uh, in Mexico. So she does that stuff, then she comes to your house, right? Yes. Well, I mean, this is the deal. If you, if you're, if she's involved with that stuff, she's obviously opening herself up to demonic stuff because we know that mediums are, are they're, they're communicating with demons. They're not communicating with. Your, your, you know, your grandparents or, you know, people from the past, those are demons that have been around, you know, ever since they were created, you know, when, when God created them and then they cast them down here to, to the, to the earth for that certain amount of time. But, uh, it will not affect you. She could have demonic stuff happening around her. So there could, when she comes to your house, stuff could happen at their house. But that's why we know that verse greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Jesus is greater. But what you have to do is in love, you have to just show her the scriptures where the Bible clearly talks about, you know, not giving yourself to mediums. I mean, we know the story from Samuel where uh, 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 King Saul went 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 to a, a medium, which was totally uh, it was against the law in the nation of Israel. They were actually to be killed if they existed. And he went to a medium late at night to to get Elijah to come back from the dead. And, and God literally cursed him and he ended up dying the next day. I mean, it is. 
it is demonic. I mean, it's it's messing the, it's messing with Satan and his demons. But so you should show him the scripture, Sean. Do you know the scripture and? Uh, uh, well, I'd say what you're saying right now. I, I think you said everything right. I think First John chapter four: Great is he that is in than us, than he that is of the world. I think one of the best is Second Timothy one seven. God is God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And what you're talking about in the Old Testament with um, Saul, he actually tried to request Samuel to come back from the oh, dead yeah, because Samuel. he had lost, you know, his way, and he couldn't. He wasn't listening to the the, the voice of the Lord, so he went after a demonic spirit. What I would say is that we are we by ourselves should not ever delve in the spirit the the demonic realm at all. You know, you don't play these games for your your family. Uh, what, what's your name again, Angela? I would just encourage you. No, uh, Denise, I would encourage you to just stay close to the the heartbeat of the Lord. I would anoint your house. I would anoint your children. Mm -hmm. I would pray. And by the Spirit of God, that the Lord would just minister to your mom's life for sure, her to come to the Lord and in a loving way share with her and communicate to her that this is something that could be very detrimental to her. You, you love on her. But a lot of times people grow up in a culture, especially from that background, big down there. you know, in Mexico and everything. I know a lot of people it's just like in their their lifestyle a lot of times, you know, so I would just yeah. encourage her. But you stay focused upon the Lord. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is of the yeah, world. You don't need to live in fear. That's what I would say. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. God, God's in control. Well, thank you, Denise, for your call. And uh, thank you, we love you, okay? You got this. Thank you. In Jesus' thank you name. so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you right on. It. Well, we uh, we have uh, An Angel from Angela. San Diego. Angela, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So what is your question tonight? So... I just would like to know how I can be a, a witness to my son. He's 17 years old. He's heavily into drugs. Um, he, you know, he's, he, he calls out to Jesus, and then he kind of falls right back into drugs. Um, he's, he's very talented with playing the electric guitar. Mm. Um, he's struggling a lot in school because of the drugs. Um, he listens to some, some um, very, um, I think it's demonic music. Mm -hmm. um, and he also, you know, he, the kind of movies that he watches, you know, there's a lot of stuff that he's not willing to give up, um, as, 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 you know, along with the drugs. And um, I, I just, you know, I've anointed our house. I've, I'm constantly praying for him. Um, you know, his grandparents are constantly praying for him. Mm -hmm. His brother and sister are praying for him. You know, I just, I, is he seeing a demons? treatment center is, right is now. He, is he having like demon encounters or something? Yes, he does. Okay. So what, what is he saying about this stuff? He's into a psychotic episode. He's been in a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so they, like he's having like these demons actually show up to his room and like manifest themselves? He has, yes. So what does he say about this? Like, I mean... If, if he gets I mean, scared, he gets scared, you know, and he tells me about these encounters. But he just goes back and, and forth. Yeah, and then he then he gives his life over to Jesus again, you know, and he says he's gonna he's gonna stop listening to this music and he's gonna stop doing drugs and you know he does it for a little while and then he's got this addiction where he he he's really addicted to the psychedelic drugs because it alters his mind and yeah. he really struggles with severe depression. And so whatever he, whatever he can take to alter his mind, he's, you know, I guess that's, I guess he's self-medicating. Okay. Well, he does. I, well, I, well, I can relate, uh, I can relate to this a lot as, as well as Sean. Um, we, we are heavily into hallucinogenics, met LSD and ecstasy and mescaline and, and mushrooms and all these things for many, many, many years. I mean, I, I was doing this stuff all the way till I was 32 years old, started at 15 years old, and we were having demonic encounters as well. We are going to break right now, so I'm going to put you on hold, and then we're going to take this call right when we get back from the break. Is that cool? Sure. Okay, cool. So before we go to break in a couple minutes here, um, if you tuned in, this is live with Ryan Reese. We want to hear from you guys. We're talking about spiritual warfare, oppression, depression, um, oppression or possession of demons. Um, right after the break, we'll talk to you guys in two minutes. Peace. More live with.
with Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... Now, back to live with Ryan Reese from Southern California. Right on, Angela. We're back from the break. Um, if you guys just tuned in, we've been just talking about uh, demon possession, demon oppression, how it's, uh, you know, this culture we're living in. It's, it's the same, same stuff as the old days. I mean, you read about Jesus. He was casting out demons and people being oppressed and possessed. And even these days, as we're doing ministry, meeting up with these kids and younger people, older people, uh, the enemies at work. And, uh, you know, just from these phone calls, you could hear that he's he's been messing with a lot of different people. So we have uh, Angela on the line right now. And Angela was talking about her 17 year old son is heavily into drugs. Uh, he's he's witnessing these 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 demons are, are harassing him. He's he's into the music industry. And uh, people are praying for him, and it's just back this back and forth, giving his life to God, going back to the world. So when we were at the break, I wanted to, I was talking to my friend Mike Angela, and, and he has a heavy background in, in this whole thing, how he got saved. So I'm going to let him speak into this one. Yeah, hey, Angela. Um, we were to start off the, the program with talking about Ouija boards and all that kind of stuff. And it's so weird how we think that, a Ouija board, I don't know if I can mention, you know, the company, but it's in a major, it's sold in a major toy store. And it's so weird how, you know, that it's, it's sold like a toy to kids. And when you look at, like, the media and music and all that stuff, I was going to say when Sean was talking a moment back about the Beatles and stuff like that, it seems like, if you look at it, Satan's like a Pied Piper and he's using music, you know, and he's drawing the kids in. And we all have testimonies how music and lyrics had had done things and and you know we we wound up doing crazy things by listening to lyrics and stuff like that but when it comes to your son i would, i just say don't give up you know he's having these demonic experiences and he's the cool thing is most importantly is he's crying out to jesus and i kind of feel like i have the same testimony as your son you know i was playing music um i was having demonic experiences and it took me probably a handful of years you know, three to four years before I started getting my senses together, you know, but every time it happened, I would cry out to Jesus and that's where the power was. And, but, you know, I didn't 
I could probably look like I, I wasn't going to come around. You know, I probably was the most lo- least likely guy to get saved. But, you know, as those things kept happening, you know, I, I was still crying out to God. And, and I, I finally got my senses together and was going, I got to really do this and follow him. So I would just say, don't give up. That's so awesome that he's crying out to the Lord. Just keep keep him in prayer. And it's like Ryan's testimony. He says, you know, when Ryan was doing his thing in party and his his dad, Raul Reese, you know, he, he didn't give up on him and he wasn't judging him and, and giving him a hard time, but he just loved him. So I just didn't, would encourage you to, to love your son and be there for him and, and don't judge him, but be a light for him and be a place, uh, an oasis for him to come. And, uh, you know, just ha- keep it, uh, him in prayer. And I think, you know, he'll come around. I know this, the stuff, if he's involved with heavily drugs and he's listening to music that those people that are making that music are into that stuff. I mean, he he's just opening up doorways. And I know when I right. got saved, I got rid of, there was a lot of music I stopped listening to. There was concerts I don't go to and definitely stopped using drugs and stuff. And that's how God started working my life. But right now there's a battle, you know, just like yeah, Ephesians 6. Yeah, he's not giving talks it about, all up yet. Huh? Yeah. yeah, he's not willing to give all that up yet. And, so then, and that's, what, that's what it comes down to. The, the bottom line is, like if you go to AA, you know, Alcoholic Anonymous, you could call up and say, hey, my son's an alcoholic. I want to drop him off. And what they're going to tell you first is, does he want to quit? And you're going to say no. And they're like, don't even worry about dropping him off. You have to get, he has to get to the end of himself to where he doesn't want any more. Where I was at in my hotel room after nine days of cocaine and Xanax and obviously dump, demonic stuff. And this stuff was happening for years, for like 18 years. It wasn't until I was at the end of myself in my hotel room where I called out to God and then God just came in and worked heavily. So right now, the only thing you can do, and it's probably the, <laughs> it's the most powerful thing you can do is pray because okay, <clears throat> it, it's it's power and prayer. That's that's the bottom line. Right. If he doesn't right. want to quit, you got to pray that God will bring him to his knees to repentance. When he, I have a question. Mm-hmm. When he's sleeping, I, I lay hands on him. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I pray over him. And sometimes I cat, you know, I'll cast out demons. Do you think that that I should do that when he's not wi- yet willing to? I don't think there's. Any, I don't think there's anything wrong with praying over over your son. My yeah. mom used to do that yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'd come home high on LSD and I'd pass out, and then my mom would be praying. And she said I did some crazy things sometimes. Yeah. And Andrew, right. I want I want to encourage you because we are here because of praying moms. My mom was someone that always prayed for me. She saw us go do so much different stuff in our lives, and uh, now it's amazing what God's doing in her life too. Um, but I would surely encourage you because I mean I have kids now too, so it's like you you don't want your kids ever to go through this stuff. Um, but you as a parent have to realize that God has called you to intercede on the behalf of your son. And you got to understand that God is able to touch lives. We are, are here because of answered prayer. I'll, I'll give you this little bit of encouragement real quick. After I was walking with the Lord for about two years, I was uh, I had borrowed my parents' truck to, to go somewhere or whatever. And the next day, I realized that I left, like, the, there was a journal in my car. I didn't realize. And I, I looked at it, and it wasn't my journal. So what do you do? You read it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was my mom's journal. I opened it up and it was from like 2002 or something. And it's like talking about my brother. And then it says, and it says my name. And it's like, and I'm praying, Lord, that you would do a work in his life. Sean looks so bad. It, you know, he looked all sucked up and all this kind of stuff. And I'm listening to these, what my mom's writing of these prayers. I'm like crazy. Like prayer has come to pass because here I am so reminded a couple of years. And now it's been over 11 years, been in full-time ministry and, you know, don't give up hope. God is able. That's all I would leave you with, Angela. Prayer. Thank prayer, you so prayer. Much. Thank you so much. No right, we love you, all right? Oh, hey, wh- where, where do you guys live? By You guys are in San Diego? Yeah, Chula Vista. Well, if you ever get a chance and he's down to come up, uh, come meet, meet up with me at a shine. We, we do a shine at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa on Thursday nights at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar on Sunday nights. Um, I would love to meet up and just chop it up with him and, and get real with him. Oh, yeah, I would love to bring him. I, I will meet with him any Thursday night or any Sunday night. If he comes up, I'll, I'll stay after him and meet up with him for hours until we're done talking. So that would be okay, rad. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, awesome. Love you. See ya. Love hey, you. 
All if right. you're tuning in right now, this is live with Ryan Reese, and we were going to give out the number again because we know a lot of calls are coming through because we're talking about spiritual warfare, of the own things that the things that we battle with as we see of it so relative in the culture that we're in around right now. And so we want to make sure that we can communicate with you guys. 888-564-6173 is the number. 888-564-6173. We'd love to hear from you. All right, we're going to move to uh, Serge over in uh, Hemet, California. How you doing, Serge? Yeah, good evening. Uh, love your show, guys. Uh, good work. Come uh, right on. Share something real quick. Um, I was living in Burbank, California at the time, and um, I got up at 2 in the morning, and my furnace was just blasting 85 degrees. And when I got up to turn the furnace down, there's a figure in the living room that looks like my father. And so the first thought that went through my mind, I said, well, my dad passed away, now he's coming to get me. And without even looking again, uh, this figure said, uh, you're coming with me, and my dad's French. You would have talked to me in French. So I said, get out of here, Satan. You don't belong here. Mm-hmm. week later, uh, same thing, furnace is up, but this time there's a lady in my bed, and I jumped out of bed, and I said, you need to get out of here. So then a few days later, I was attending Calvary Chapel of the Foothills uh, with your uncle, Gary Ruff, yep. and explained to him what happened. And he says, uh, first of all, Satan will mess with your head, but he cannot hurt you or touch you. And he says, number two, he says, you must be uh, pretty good with the Lord because he only attacks people that are really strong Christian. So I said, well, <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> Yeah, he, 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 likes, he likes to discourage. He likes to come in and do little cheap shots. But like I said, that verse earlier, you know, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Thanks a lot for calling, Serge. We love you, man. Um, yeah, if you're out there, we want to hear from you. If you've been dealing with any of this stuff, uh, you're going through this, and maybe you don't know how to get out of this spiritual warfare. Maybe you uh, feel like something comes over you and you have no control of your body. That's demon possession, and you need to get set free. We would, we would love to get you to our church and meet up with you and, and pray over you. Um, I was in a rehab up in uh, L.A. This was a couple of years ago, maybe like two or three years ago. We were in this, this mainstream rehab, and this, this girl came up to me and said, I had the devil in me. And I said, well, wait, you had the devil in you? What are you talking about? Just this shit, is this shit crazy? And the people in the rehab said, no, this was a public rehab. This was not a Christian rehab. She said, no, she starts speaking in different languages. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, uh-oh. So we ended up, you know, we prayed for her. We laid oil on her. She started manifesting and speaking in like Latin or some crazy. She was like this this, this uh, Mexican lady from uh, from like, uh, like you know, I don't know, uh, like Whittier or something like that, you know. She does not know Latin. She starts speaking in this different language. And after a series of, of a min, like 30 minutes of us praying over her, the demon ended up coming out of her. And she was set free. And I seen her like four months later at her church. And, uh, you know, she's walking with God now. But this stuff's real, man. This stuff's real. And Jesus preaches about it all through the New Testament. But um, a lot of people are going through this stuff, but they don't feel like they have anyone they can talk to because people are going to think they're crazy. You could call us. We don't think you're crazy. We have many of these stories of different people that have been through this stuff. And you have actually three people in the studio right here that have been through this stuff and been set free. We're going to go ahead and take uh, Maria calling from Menifee. Hello. How you doing, What's Mary? Going on, Maria? Hello. Uh, Maria. Hi. Hi. God bless you guys for your ministry here. Awesome. I just want to give thanks, first of all, to God for having chosen me and taken me out of the lifestyle I grew up in. But my question to you is this. When we are being physically attacked with uh, sicknesses, ailments, and diseases, is that a form of demonic oppression? Because at one point in our life, we we did... We did have um, some type of a bond with uh, Satan and with demons in our life. But when we came to Christ in 2007, all of that ended. And ever since that ended, um, I've been being physically attacked. I've been sick for long periods of time. And I just have, I have hope in God that his plan in my life is perfect. And if I'm sick like this, there's a reason for it because like his word says his grace is sufficient for me but i would like to know is it related in some way uh to demonic oppression that's a good question maria and i think there's a a couple of different facets of it uh one you know in the book of romans chapter eight you know paul is writing about um 
the reality of our world around us, that how the world was created, God created it perfect. But with the fall of man and sin entering the world and entering the human race, there are things that came with that territory. And one of them was death. At the moment that Adam and Eve partook of the tree of good and evil, it says that at that moment they would, they died spiritually, but they also eventually would die physically. Along with the fallen nature, there were diseases that are in our culture, the things that we see in our culture today. I mean, there are a lot of sicknesses. Are those things completely linked to the enemy? I believe it's the, the fall of men. It's the, you know, that's where we have all this stuff. Thank the Lord for some medicine that has been created to help in some of these things. But as far as a child of God, this is what's so very important. And we see this in the book of Job. I think that's the greatest picture because Job was a godly man, right? The Bible says that there's no one as righteous as Job, but he went through a lot of stuff. The Bible says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion. And that's what the Bible depicts there in the book of Job. And Job came to the throne of God, and the Lord says, did you consider my servant Job? Satan came to, yeah. Right? And he said, do you consider my servant Job? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, you know, he has everything, and you take care of him. Why wouldn't he serve you? And then the Lord allowed the enemy to test him. Mm -hmm. And as a child of God, sometimes the enemy is, is allowed to, 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 to uh, test us or to, to attack us in some way. But the Lord will always do his perfect will through it. And I think what you all that what you said just a minute ago is key for his grace is sufficient for you. Strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul himself went through a lot of different things in life. I mean, some of the greatest pastors, um, Spurgeon and all of these guys, they went through um, depression at times. They went through many much spiritual warfare and agony. David himself went through a lot of spiritual warfare as well. I think it's just a reality of what Ryan started off this whole show with of the Ephesians chapter six, you know, the enemy is out there. We are in a battle. We put on the full armor of God. It doesn't mean that God's not with us. God is for us. And who, if God's for us, who can be against us? Um, but you know, we do have ailments like you were saying that you're battling with. Some of them are physical because of the, the fall of, of the world, right? My, my question is like, how, how'd you make some packs with, uh, how were you connected to, to Satan or the demons? Were you guys into like voodoo or like, uh, you know, quick, uh, First of all, it's in our generation. Um, my grandmother was Italian. Uh, she was Italian. Mm -hmm. um, so that those roots came out of there. And my mom is from deep in Mexico. So um, there was always that, those type of practices within the family. However, when my mom lost custody of us as a child, um, I kind of dug my head into that um, that lifestyle and i i would talk to demons at a very young age and i could see them they materialized um yeah. and they came to me at night and they were like foes they were like um they pretended to be my friends but when i came to christ they were angry <laughs> yeah of course and things started flying in our home and doors slamming and we could see them my kids could see them something that couldn't they could never see before i was the only one that could see them my husband started seeing them in our visit our company our pastors everybody they started seeing these things in our home and um we had to sit as a family and pray and fast and anoint our home Perfect. and yeah. we invited the holy spirit into our home and these are generational curses that are broken you know i have no doubt that jesus saved our family from those things and um I know that his plans are great for us. I always have the verse, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven in my head since I came to Christ. I know that his plan is perfect for me. And I believe, like you guys were saying earlier, um, in, somebody was saying that he attacks the strong because even in my ailments, I take advantage and I minister to people who are lost out there. And I say, God, if that's the last thing I'm doing for you, then that's the last thing I'm doing for you. I just have so much faith in that's him. Awesome, he's taken me out of the darkest place in yes. my life. And he's brought me out of that. And for me, the sickness is nothing compared to what I have been through in my life. I just him because he chose me. And it's funny that you guys mentioned Job because whenever I'm sick and I open my Bible, 
I always think of Job and yeah. what he went through and how he lost his whole family and he was alone. Yeah. And his own family told him, curse God. And he never did. You yeah. know, even in his sickness, you know, he never did. And I just have so much faith in Christ and I can't wait till his day comes. Yes. I really can't. <laughs> well, I want to, to say, uh, you know, that's, that's exactly uh, right what you did is you had pastors come down and pray for your house, pray for your family. We know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Um, I know I have a couple of friends that were involved with, uh, you know, New Age, which is all satanic as well. And and since they left, you know, they've had stuff happening around their house. I think when you open yourself up to the demonic realm, they'll keep messing with you for a while. But you got to keep rebuking them and sticking, you know, sticking to God. And God allows. He allows stuff to happen. These trials and tribulations to, to build our Christian character. And, uh, you know, like, like the whole Job situation or even Paul, a messenger from Satan came and, you know, he, Paul talks about that. You know, and even I thought about the two stories about Jesus when one guy was one one guy couldn't see and Jesus decided to heal him. They said, oh, was is that, you know, was he born like that or was he is, does he have a demon? He said, no, he was born like that to show God's glory. Right. So all through the Bible, sickness is either because it's a fallen world or it could be through God could let Satan do some stuff in your life. So. Right. It's it's a two way street, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I th just think uh, with that all is uh, as all, we're talking about all these different things. Understand this. And we all me and I always talk about this, too. The power of God supersedes all of this stuff. And I, w I just want to encourage you in that. Even talk about generational curses. You know, the Bible doesn't really talk about that. It, what it does say is that. We you know when you're around spiritual warfare and you have stuff in your home, you have stuff in your culture, those are things that you're introduced to and it definitely is a reality. But when one person comes to a place where they submit to God, they resist the devil, God can radically change that life and you're not bound to any curse or anything like that. God has truly set you free. A lot of things that have taken place on some of these phone calls, Ryan, is like people need to make a choice. Do you want to play games with the enemy or do you want to submit to the Lord? You know, one of the greatest revivals that you see in the Bible when you're talking about demonic activity is in the city of Ephesus that you see in the book of Acts. And what was taking place there is that all of these people were given over to magic books and potions and all that stuff. And when they saw the power of God and they didn't want to play games anymore, man, they threw all that stuff on the fire. They burnt it. And they're like, look, there was a fear and a reverence that came upon mm -hmm. the Lord and they didn't play games. Well, cool, man. I, we have uh, time for another call. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, from Vista, Violet. How, how do you say that? Violetta. 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 Hi, how are you? Good, how are you, good? How you, doing? How are you doing? What's your uh, question tonight? My question, basically, you guys just answered it. Um, just, you know, why why does God allow, you know, when we're interceding and praying, um, why God allows such, um, I mean, with me personally, it's been really intense. What's been going on with you? Uh, everything under the sun. I'm, I'm interceding. God's waking me up at two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, up, out, on your knees, and just praying and interceding for revival mm -hmm. for North County, San Diego. And um, I, he opened my eyes, and I'm seeing demons. I'm seeing up the whole angelic war going on in front of my face, and. You know, and uh, it's pretty gnarly. And I've had some poltergeist experiences. I had my hand grabbed and, and shoved through my steering wheel of my car when my car swerved. And um, I saw something grab my hand. I mean, it's never done that before. I've never had that happen before. I knew it was a demonic attack. And you're, and you're rebuking that in Jesus' name, obviously, when, you know, stuff oh, like that yeah. can happen. I mean, but it was so frightening. It was like, these things want to kill me. Well, yeah, you know? they, they don't like the human race because we're, we're creating God's uh, image. So after going through all this stuff and this last ca question from the last caller, it's, you know, that, you know, greater is he that's in us. See, right. God, if you're praying and you're warring in this spirit, the enemy's not happy because revival, I'm sure, is going to break out in these last days with everything that's going on in, in culture with ISIS and America and the state it's in. And it's it's crazy. But, um, yeah, I mean, when, it seems like. The people that are that are born and, and, and in tune with the spirit, the enemy is 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 on their butt in a sense. And the ones that are just lackadaisy, kind of cruising through life, taking up that that cheap grace, uh, the, the enemy doesn't want anything to do with them, really. Yeah. So we'll 
We'll, we'll keep you in prayer, all right? Please do, because it's been really intense, and um, I'm not going to stop, and I'm not going to give up. And Absolutely. It seems like the more, the, the more um, you know, it comes at me, the more I go after it, you know what yep. I mean? Like, I'm like, bring it, let's go, you know, and I'm praying even harder. Oh, and, that's it. That's what you it's know, about. The attacks are getting even harder, you know what I mean? And so it's like I feel like, okay, this is training for, for me to understand God's authority. Yep. There, well, there's you know? power. There's power in Jesus' name. You know that. So just keep yeah. using that. We're, we, we're gonna yeah. we got to grab a couple more calls. Well, thank you. We thank God you for your call. You. I'm I'm glad you're talking about it. Oh, awesome. Okay. Right on. Right on. Well, shoot. I think we have about uh, two, two more minutes. minutes. Um, uh, let's see. Here we go. What do you guys want to do? There's there's. I mean, they, we just got all new phone calls. We have like ten calls or. We have uh, we have time for one one last call. Whatever you want. You know we're gonna be um when we hang up here we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to take to... everyone else's calls that are that are on the lines. So we aren't gonna have time to take all these calls. I, w- I would say I think something very important, Ryan, is that our hearts go out to all those families that were affected in, in San Bernardino. Absolutely. You know it, it's just the crazy times that we're living in, and we know that this is family. That there are people that actually we know actually do ministry that were connected to some of those people that died. Of those 14. So we do want to say to all those, San Bernardino is not far from here. It's I was there today. I was six was blocks from the location. From my house. So I would really encourage you guys to continue to pray for the things that we're battling with in the world. There is, it's an evil world for sure. And I think we need to wake up as the body of Christ and seek the Lord and see what he has for our lives. Because we are living in crazy, crazy times. There's no doubt about my it. My dad sent me a picture of uh, all these, these people on this huge, in this huge desert. And they all had their... They all had their heads in the sand. I saw that. Yeah, he and that sand. picture is a perfect picture of the state of the church, the state of America. Everyone has the head in their sand. They're more caught up on what the Kardashians are doing, <laughs> or you know what they're how many likes on Instagram they're getting. But the reality is, the world leader, the new world leader, is coming. The yeah. Bible refers to them as the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, there's so many different Antichrist spirits, you know, like Mm -hmm. music and Antichrist people. Anyone that's not for God is Antichrist, you know. But the new world leader is coming up on the scent soon. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, is coming back. And we got to get ready. Why is there so much demonic stuff happening in the world? Because time is ticking. Satan knows. knows. He's trying to get people scared. He's trying to shake the place up because this time's coming. When the the world leader's coming and the, and the, and Satan's gonna have his way for for a short period of time, but the thing is, you do not want to get left behind. If you can't accept the Lord now, it says that there'll be a great deception. Even the elect could be deceived. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you can't accept the Lord now, walk with him now. What makes you think you can walk with him when the Holy Spirit's gone? It says that people are gonna be deceived big time. Oh yeah, and that's how the Satan works in deception the cure to it is this james 4 6 simple verse remember it submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you give your life to jesus repent call jesus to come into your life tonight wherever you're at i'll All talk guys. to you guys next week we love, love you guys you. see you next week god bless this has been live with ryan reese to connect or find out more about ryan Click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.